It's me, Mikey Pipes. Hope all is well. Season's greetings, happy holidays. Regardless of what you celebrate, I hope uh, God blesses you, you and your family. All right, right now I am on Rockaway Avenue in Valley Stream. We are heading to our next service call. Gentleman's got a train gas furnace and it's blowing cold air. So we were there in early October to do a heating tune-up and the only issue that we saw was the hot service igniter was out of range. We measured the resistance on it. It was out of range. We recommended to replace it and sure enough uh, he went for the replacement and I'm quite confident that the hot service igniter is good but if it's bad it's covered under it's covered under my company's 24 month unconditional warranty yes that's right 24 months i guarantee parts and labor on any repair or install that we that we do all right let's go see what's going on hopefully i'll get some footage of the the service call and um we'll see what's going on take care of him give him some heat juanitos the best churrasco See, it's Churrasco, the best, the absolute best. Rockaway Avenue. Come on, pay attention there, buddy. And remember, today is Monday, November 29th. Today is what we call Cyber Monday. And Mikey Pipes, which is me, we are going to have a sale. We're going to have a Cyber Monday sale that's going to be valid until December 1st. And let me tell you what the offer is. I am going to send you all four versions of the sticker. You ain't testing, you're guessing. Stacks bring me hacks, bring me stacks, and season's greetings. You're going to get four stickers, which would normally be a $20 value. But if you act now, and if you place an order before December 1st, I am going to double the offer and slash the price in half to $10. That's right, you heard me correct, ladies and gentlemen. For a donation of $10 to the postage fund, I am gonna send you eight stickers. Eight stickers for $10, and I will ship them anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world. You hear me? So what are you waiting for? Details in the description box down below. Email me, Mike at MikeyPipes.com. I take PayPal, I take Venmo, and I take Cash App. Or you can send me gold bullion, bearer bonds, loose change, cash, currency in the mail, and my address is in the description box down below. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's go to our next service call. Hi. Hey there. Your puppy is cold. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> what's up there, mate? How are you? Happy holidays. Oh, same to you, brother. Thank you. All good? Thank you, thank you. Well, it wasn't for yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see. Is the garage door open? Uh, let me open. Okay. Thank you. All right. It's got this nice corner lot at Sunrise Highway there. Probably put a new hose reel. It's cold. It's cold. It's cold. Yeah. Is the thermostat on right now? Yes, it is. It's cooling. And, you know, actually, I turned the heat off because it's oh. blowing constantly. Okay. I don't want the motor to burn out. I can turn that on right now. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, let's do that. turn that on. Now, I've got every. I've got gas. I've okay. got hot water. I've got the intake is nice. The filter is clean. We're not getting ignition. Okay. Let's just raise the temperature up on the okay. thermostat. We'll turn that on, and we'll see what this bad boy is doing. On. Looks like it's just a steady heartbeat there. Let's see, a steady heartbeat. All right, inducer motor is on. Continuous flash. I see my hot service igniter. I see. That hot service igniter came on. Let's see? When did it stop working? 
into me yesterday. That's not a fail completely. Pure cold air. Yeah. So the hot surface night it comes on. Okay, that's interesting. Right, which it should. Yes. But we don't have ignition. Why would that be? That's a great question. And we're still and we got gas. I'm not clean the Yeah. We have continuous flash. Alright, let's see. Gas is on. Okay, sure, no problem. little nifty Milwaukee light it's got a magnetic base in there helps me see better as you get older you start to see less <clears throat> let's turn the power off I got my switch through right here which you mother flower you on the gas valve all right here are my two leads which give 24 volts to the gas valve direction of flow that's a given there's our gas train and there's another spam call <sighs> okay and i'm on my knee pad here so i set the ac voltage i had to crimp that down a little bit because she wasn't holding in there. I turn power on and we're going to hold in the door switch. Okay. And we're going to see what kind of voltage we get here. Okay. I'm going to wait for the hot service igniter to energize with 110 volts. And shortly thereafter, we should get 24 volts there. If we don't get 24 volts here, chances are the board is bad. Right. If we do have 24 volts here, the gas valve is bad. 21. Wonder why it did that. Continuous flash. Now we don't have hot service igniter. Now we don't have to have hot surface igniter energizing. Back there. <clears throat> now we have continuous flashing. I'm leaning towards control board. Leaning towards control board. All right, she just turned off and then on for a second. There's our hot service igniter. again and see I don't like that there's 22 volts there I'm pretty sure it needs to be more almost positive I asked the group chat what they think let's see if that, we have hot surface tonight or again okay there's our leads wait for the click Sixteen point three. Sixteen point three. All right, now I have my volt. 
meter connected to the transformer, 29, which is about right. Hmm. I'm really leaning towards control board and as they say, control board, I agree. I agree. All right, take five. Let's see what this does this time. All right, there's my hot surface ignition. So a hot surface igniter. So wait for it. 19 points. Yeah, see, it's not right. Not, not right. We have a bad control. All right, let's go to the truck and get him a new control board. I believe I have something that will work. All right. Will this one work with train? No, this is the Lennox one. So it's not this one. What about this one? Train. This one will work. This one will work. Okay. Let's go put this bad boy in. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, make sure it power's off. Let's try to make ourselves a little bit of room here. It's kind of tight, but put those off to the side. Let's give ourselves as much room as possible. All right. And let's move over the knee pad a little bit. All right, now let's take a look at our wiring. These two, the C and the Y, and that's condenser. And the other ones we have R, W, and G. Oh no. Oh no. I mean, how's that air conditioning? I'm sorry. We have W and C. I bet she's got like a Nest or a Wi Fi thermostat. And the other ones are W, R, and G. No, no central air here. All right. So let's get the show on the road. There's the control comes with this little thing it was taped to it this is the uh, rollout shunt jumper required on all uh, trained american standard furnaces in new york and that particular model it's a little jumper we'll have to read the manual to see exactly where that goes but that little jumper must go somewhere somewhere we'll read the manual the manual a bunch of wiring harnesses there's the manual move that out of the way maximize room here and there's our low voltage control wire. Make that out of the way. And here is uh, the nine pin Molex connector. Come on. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna take a needle nose and cut that. All right. We're gonna disconnect this other connector right there all right bring that out of the way and next i'm going to focus on taking out those four brace those little mounting clips and take this thing off and then mount this one break all these off and the last one's right there All right, the board is mounted. It comes with a bunch of screws and mounting clips, but I put a screw there, there, and down there. Now I've opened up the manual, page two, tells us that the rollout shunt jumper required, and for proper operation, you must install the included shunt jumper on the circled two pin RO rollout terminal. The shunt jumper is packaged separately as an accessory item in the kit. Failure to do so will disable furnace operation. So we're gonna take that shunt and put it right there on RO, which is right there. All right, page three tells you the harness selection table. So if you've got a carrier, ICP, Fetters, White Rogers, uh, Amana, Goodman, ICM, Nordine, Reem Rude, and you're gonna use one of these included jumpers which come in that 
not jumper, the adapter, which come in that bag. <clears throat> Having a train, it's a uh, plug and play. All right, so we got the thing mounted. We have, you should really read this manual in its entirety, but we're gonna start swapping over wires and it's pretty self-explanatory. All right. Well, that's All right, the first thing I'm going to do is take off the three neutrals over there and put it on this neutral bus. All this, this is the neutral bus. So I have those three connected. Next, <laughs> very dusty here. We have this connector, which goes into there and it locks into place. This uh, is the right way. No, you're going to get it flipped over, huh? trying to save a day okay this one to my transformer let's make sure she's secure in there okay now I have fan and other things like the inducer right, down at the bottom dead center of the screen <sighs> this is my transformer hot this is my line hot these two, the red and the yellow, that's park, not being used by the fan. Black is cool high, and there's only cool high, and there's only cool. And then the blue is heat high. Let's see, cool high, and back there is heat high. There's no stages on this plan. While we're looking at this, let's notice any issues with it. I don't really see anything out of the ordinary on the front side, and on the back. A little bit discolored there. It's above those. Alright. Now let's give this thing a the line low voltage wiring and then we'll fire her up. Alright. So there's my wiring. The W's, the R, the G and the C. And let's turn you back on. And let's see what happens. It would help if I turn that switch on. Inducer motor. <clears throat> I want to see voltage on that. Let's wait for the hot service emitter to come on. Okay. And what kind of voltage are you working with? Interesting. Again, this is uncut, <laughs> raw, unedited. I do have my voltmeter on the valves that would normally go to the gas valve. We're waiting for it to recycle. We're going to wait for that hot surface igniter to kick on. And we'll see what happens. service igniter. Don't let me down, buddy. Don't let me down. Let me see some voltage. Show me your voltage. There you go. Look at that. So if that was connected, the gas valve would have been Okay. Gas valve is wired. Everything else is secure. Let's press the door switch. Let this thing boot up and we should have ignition. 
wait for that and do some motor assembly to kick on there it goes next is once that pressure switch closes when it senses that draft or that pressure being created in the heat exchanger it's going to energize the well the control board is going to energize the uh, hot surface igniter which is doing right now and we're not going to see anything there because it's not connected but in a few seconds we should hear a click and the gas valve should open and energize and houston we have ignition 1120 houston we have ignition all right time to give the homeowner an update Hi, puppy. Can I, can I give you an update? Come in, come in. So you got something going. Yes. Yeah. So again, I'm, I'm still in the testing stages now, but now it's time to update you with the diagnosis. Please. When I arrived here, uh, you know, we saw that hot surface igniter, like similar to the ele element on electric stove, comes on. Yes. I was suspecting, because I know we just changed it, that things do happen, and if it's if it's going to fail, it's usually going to fail within the first month. And I'll have to swap out the hot service igniter, apologize to you, and wish you, and then change it, and wish That's you the best. That's what I was going to Right? I, I always suspect, especially if we were just here, like, like literally, like a month and a half ago, maybe beginning, beginning yeah, yeah. of October. Month, yeah. Month. yeah. Uh, but we had that hot service ignition uh, lighting up. You can see that through that little eye there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, through the thing. That's so. That's a little trick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the next step for me is to test voltages and see what is going, what's not. So I tested that the gas valve. Uh, which normally gets around 26, 28 volts. Okay. First time I turned it on, I got 22 volts. And I'm like, ah, something's not right. Borderline. The yeah. next time I turned it on, it didn't get anything. But the third time, it got 16. Then it got 16 again. And then Whoa. it got nothing. Then Whoa. it got 22. Then it got 60. So I did like five times. Because I wanted, because you said intermittent yesterday. It certainly was. So I want to see what... we're seeing. Yes. I want to confirm that. And I, and I confirm that. What kind of power supply is that? Well, so the, the control board gets 26 oh, volts okay, from the okay. transformer, and the okay. transformer is actually giving out the right voltage. Oh, but the, but the okay. control board was not distributing that power to the gas valve, okay. so the gas valve wasn't opening. Okay. I was hoping that the gas valve was getting the right voltage, and I could just replace the gas valve, but not the control board. No such luck. Okay. <laughs> so, because if, it, if it's getting voltage and it's not opening, you need a new gas valve. But if it's not getting voltage, therefore it's not opening, because it doesn't, yeah, yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. board is. That's, so, that's DC voltage? Course. No, it's AC voltage. AC voltage, really? Yes. Okay. Um, I Are you opening a coil or something? Is the, the yeah, the solenoid. The solenoid okay. inside yeah, the yeah, gas valve yeah. and it opens it, and, it. It, and it, it lets the gas out. So I have, for testing purposes, I took a brand new one out of the box. Uh, it's a universal one. It works across multiple brands. That's very convenient. Yes. <laughs> so, but by default, it works for train slash American standard, which is what cool. you have. Very good. You have to make some modifications to the configuration of the programming of it, but it it's basically plug and play. It fits perfectly. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Perfectly. Because I was thinking, I'm not going to have this damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> so let me look up the price for it. Okay. And um, other than that, you're good. Hey, baby. Hi, puppy. It's a cavapoo, right? That is a cocker, actually. A cockapoo? Yeah, like just a oh, it's a cocker, cocker spaniel? That's a straight cocker spaniel. Oh, yeah. you're so soft. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me go look that up here. Thank you. You're very well. You're my pleasure. You're right here. Good night, ah! baby. Yes, sir. I'll let her out. All right. Yep, she ran out the dog hole. <laughs> but I'll keep this one closed. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Ah! <laughs> Cocker Spaniel. All right. All right, let's check this one more time. I want to see if there's any movement with flame once the blower comes on. Let's see. Nice solid blue right there. blower comes on we want to see if there's any movement there and we'll have like a good 30 seconds before it does but there's a hot surface igniter there's our there's our gas igniting we're gonna see shortly some numbers here all of them we're gonna see 
We're going to see temperature increase. We're going to see O2 decrease. We're going to see parts per million of particles per million of CO, and that should be under 50. And it's a little bit high right now. And we'll see a CO2 of three and climbing. So let's watch these numbers once that burner, I mean the blower, comes on, which will be shortly. But and also look at the flame. Oh, it just came on. And it did not increase. But a little bit of waving around. You see that? I can see that. Yeah, and it that. wasn't like that before the fan came on. I'll show you. I'll show it to you again. Okay. All right. So I drilled a nice size hole right there and got my Milwaukee M12 inspection camera out, and I don't see any any issues with the heat exchanger. Combustion analysis done with the Testo 320 also tested out fine and the guy happens to be an engineer he said he's going to monitor this thing and check that but now that it's been running for about 20 minutes we cycled several times there's very very little change to the uh the flame on the main burners so i'm confident she's safe on this train xor hello So question, yes. did you get a front row uh, seat to the <laughs> the show that was going on on Sunrise Lobby last week? Were you I was, home? I was on the front line. Oh, you were so lucky. What? Apparently a, a t an oil tanker flipped over. Oh, jeez. And it shut oh, down man. Sunrise Highway from Mill Road to like Saturday. Well, what's the, oh, jeez. Right. Once the DEC gets involved, it's just the... It was, it was shut down for oh hours upon God. hours upon hours. Oh good man. luck getting from either... Get, good luck going north or south oh, across uh, Sunrise Iowa last week. I think it was last Wednesday or Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday last week. No, it wasn't, Wednesday was right before Thanksgiving, wasn't that? I think it was the following week. Yeah, last week was a short week, but the, it was crazy. Yeah, like, I, that I was down the block on the other side of Roosevelt over yeah, here, yeah, yeah, doing yeah, a service yeah. call for a Tangles Warrior, whatever. And I made the right to go that way towards Rockaway Avenue, and the, the stop, complete standstill on Rock on 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 um, Brooke, uh, was Roosevelt. Were you stuck? So I turned, I turned around, made it, turned around. made it, made it, made it, and then went towards Peninsula, <laughs> and then got around. Whoa! I didn't hear about that. <laughs> it's crazy. It was crazy. Oh, yeah, it I was. Want you spill like that, but yeah. 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 You know, a couple of I went to Vermont about a month ago also, and when I came back, I found that the Cross Island had been closed. Because they're opening up the Elmont train yeah, station. Yeah, correct. The entire fucking Cross Island, it was backed up into Connecticut. What? <laughs> I just think it was backed up. Wow. They didn't advertise the fact that the Cross Island was closed. Yeah. And, and I heard the RFK, uh, you know, the Triborough Bridge was closed yesterday. Oh, really? Day before, yeah, I think it was yesterday that uh, someone shot a U.S. trooper and then ran him over. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, these people are animals. All right. And that concludes another successful service call. For a customer that's called us a total of five times over the past about four years or so. So it's nice. We have customer loyalty there and retention, which is great. Uh, before I left, I also reminded him of our service and maintenance packages and programs that we offer. Something to keep in mind. And again, we went above and beyond with the questionable crack to damaged heat exchanger. Drilled the hole, looked inside, uh, and that was filed up. I did the combustion test before that. I did not see an increase of anything, especially O2, when the blower came on. So, and again, followed up by, visually by drilling a hole and using my inspection camera to take a peek in there. Uh, food, uh, just a question for the community. What do you guys do, the residential guys that it is? You know, commercial, you know, we can always, the rooftop unit, we could take the, the cover off, we could look inside by removing an access panel and you know fully see the heat exchanger. But how do you guys inspect, and not pull, but how do you guys inspect a heat exchanger on a residential gas-fired furnace? Now granted, a lot of times you have an evaporator coil above it. So how do you guys do it? Let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below. And make sure you smash that thumbs up button. St. Mike commands thee to smash that thumbs up button and show the channel love by sharing. 
Sharing is caring. Don't you guys realize that by now? Sharing is caring. And if you want a magical wrench, magical pipe wrench, make sure you smash that dollar sign during the premiere of this video. All right. Thanks for watching. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.